So this is uh, workshop number six, problem number one from unit four. First things first, C8H5NO2, we calculate degrees on saturation, right? And that should be seven. And what does that mean? Degrees on saturation is equal to the total number of rings plus pi bonds in the molecule. Rings plus pi bonds, the total number. Anytime you have above four, you should think to yourself, ding, 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 benzene ring. Right? Ding, ding, ding. Ding, 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 benzene ring. So we're thinking automatically benzene ring. Why are we thinking a benzene ring? Well, a benzene ring has how many degrees of unsaturation? Benzene ring, of course, has four degrees of unsaturation. It has the ring and one, two, three pi bonds. Good. The next thing we need to look at is the IR. And remember, you're going to be graded for this. You're really going to be graded on the analysis more than anything else or the analysis. So let's look at the IR. Okay. So we have our four IR stretches. Remember, IR tells us something about functional groups. So all we're looking for here is you know, a rough idea of what this could be. So if we see a peak at 3,200 to 2,800 that's really broad, what are the possibilities that could be based on IR? That could be an, probably an OH. We don't know what it's bonded to. That's what the squiggly line means. We don't know what it's bonded to. Or it could be an NH, right, of some sort, right? Because we have nitrogen, we have oxygen in our formula up here. That's all we know. 22, 32, what do you think that might be? What kind of functional group might that be? That could be a, that's a, what region is that? That's the triple bond region. So that could be a internal alkyne, right? We don't see that 3300 CH, right? So an internal alkyne, or what else could it be? What else has a triple bond? The CN, that nitrile, that's what it also could be. Okay. 1703, what kind of function group would that be? Probably just a carbonyl, C double bond O. Do I know what type? Nope. I have no idea, but I know it's a C double bond O. What about 1250? What's 1250 going to be? CO single bond. All right. Cool. We can also look at this and see our degrees on saturation will be covered. Right? If we have a benzene ring, which we think we do, that's four. We have three more left, right? Well, if we have a triple bond, which looks like we do, that'd be one pi bond, two pi bonds, three pi bonds with the carbonyl. So that covers our degrees of unsaturation as well. So NMR is the next thing we look at. So proton NMR, and it says we have three peaks, which means we have three different types of hydrogens. Right? So you can say three types of hydrogens. We have a peak at 13.6, that's uh, with one hydrogen, that's a singlet. Way, way downfield. On your table, what is that? Anybody know? So it's one of two things. It's either the aldehyde or the carboxylic acid. When it's really far downfield, it's the carboxylic acid. So this tells me I have this. What I like to do is I like to label this as H, A, B, and C. Give them all a label so I can keep track of them. So this would be HA, my carboxylic acid. Now I have B and C. What do you, if you look at B and C, they're both worth two hydrogens. They're both, oops, they're both doublets. And they both have the same coupling constant. What does that tell you? They're coupled to each other. They're right next to each other, right? They're splitting each other. Look at their frequency. Their, their PPM is at eight and almost eight and seven. What does that tell you? What do, they, what do you think they're on? They're probably on the benzene ring. Okay, so remember we talked about before we had a benzene ring. The question is gonna be, right, how is this benzene ring gonna be substituted? How many benzene ring hydrogens do we see from B and C? How many total? Two plus two is four. So the benzene ring is substituted how many times? If you have four hydrogens left, it's substituted twice, right? Everybody see that? The question is going to be, is it, how is it substituted? Is it substituted ortho? Is it substituted meta? Or is it 
para substituted. Is it ortho, meta, or para substituted? Now, the way to figure this out is let's think about what else must be on this ring. Are the two things that are going to be on the ring going to be the same according to what we've seen? We, we know we have a carboxylic acid. That's pretty much done. And we know we either have an alkyne or a nitrile. So these two spots are going to be different, right? If they're different, this was A and this was B, all of these hydrogens would be different, right? On this one, if this was A and this was B, that would be different, that would be different, that would be different, all these hydrogens would be different. But if it's para-substituted, if this is A and this is B, these two would be the same, and these two would be the same. Do we see that? So what we think it could be is most likely is this para, right? And so if I drew that, a way to think about it is if I have X and Y here, I draw on the H's, These would both be A because they're the same distance from X as they are from Y. And these would both be B, the same difference. So we have two types. And B, one, two, three bonds away from A, would split and turn into a doublet. So we get this classic pattern of two hydrogens, two different types of peaks, where two hydrogens, both doublets, same coupling constant that is indicative of a para-substituted ring with X and Y being two different things. So we know we have something like this now, from this. Just to be consistent, I changed this to C and this to B so it matches here, okay? So now we've done our full analysis. Now we have, we have essentially pieces, and we need to figure out what we have, right? So the way we do that is we take everything we actually start to subtract from that molecular formula. So we start with C8H5NO2. So we, don't, we know we have a carboxylic acid, right? So let's subtract out. So minus a carboxylic acid would be this. We don't know what's bonded there. So minus CHO2. So we have C7H4N left. We know we have a di-substituted benzene ring. That's para-substituted, even though that we even know that much as well. This is our HA. HB, HB, HC, HC. We don't know what's on the benzene ring yet, but we know we have that. So that's minus C6, H4. So we have left a carbon and an N. What must that be? If we look back at our IR, what must that be? It must be that nitrile. So this must be that C triple bond N. So now we have three pieces. We have to put this molecule together. All right, to piece this together, this one's actually pretty easy because you know you have your benzene ring and you have two spots off of it. So one spot's gonna be for the carboxylic acid and the other spot is going to be for the nitrile. All right, you can always go back and check. Do I have the right number of degrees on saturation? I have a benzene ring. That's four. One pi bond is five. Nitrile is two pi bonds. Six, seven. So that covers my degrees on saturation. I have a carboxylic acid that checks with my IR. It checks with my NMR. I have two different types of hydrogens in my benzene ring that also matches with my NMR. They're coupled to each other. I have a nitrile stretch that matches up with a nitrile I have. I have C double bond O stretch that matches up. A CO single bond stretch, got one of those. Got the OH, it's covered. Everything matches up. Back, back through and check.